week one is in the books. Everybody's now at least got one game under their belt. And unfortunately for a lot of teams of our county, it wasn't a good night. No. I, I think if, if uh, a number of these teams could get a mulligan, tonight would be the night. Not a very good night in, in the Etowah County region. Uh, just some, some quick scores from tonight. Sand Rock uh, beat Gaston 19-6. to Ramburn over Glencoe 41-0. Oxford over Gadsden City, 42-7. Etowah, big win over Moody, 43-13. DAR over Douglas, 49-12. Cedar Bluff over Spring Garden, 14-12. Uh, Piedmont over Addison, 28-16. Fife shuts out Geraldine, 28-0. Sylvania over Sardis, 21-12. Albertville, uh, the, uh, their new coach, Gets a big win to start his era, 61 to nothing. Gunnersville, 28, Boaz, 19. Uh, Westbrook over Raglan, 47, 18. Appalachian, 49, 19 over Coosa. And then Thursday night, uh, Hoax Bluff shuts out Southside, 21 to nothing. So, uh, like I said, uh, there's a number of football coaches right now wish they had a mulligan. And they could cash it in tonight because uh, there was some bad football tonight. Except for Albert football. I mean, 61. That was the score yeah. at the half, by the way. Yeah. 61 to nothing yeah. at half. Congratulations, Cliff Mitchell, uh, getting started. Uh, this was their, their his opening game as the new head football coach at uh, taking over for, for Dale Pruitt. Uh, taking over at Albertville, so congratulations to him. Uh, what a what a whale of a way to start your your uh, head coaching career uh, with a sixty one nothing win. You know, it, it is Columbia, yes, but s- still sixty one points and a half is sixty one points and a half. Right, that is, that's just yeah, insane. That, that is so. Um, you know, not very many upsets tonight around the state. Uh, we did have one number one go down tonight. In Class 5A, uh, Briarwood lost to Chelsea 17-14. to And then uh, Ramsey, who was ranked number two, uh, fell to Pinson Valley, who happens to be ranked number two in 6A. They lost 27-7. to So the question now is, who's number one in 5A? Would it be Jasper, who was idle? Maybe uh, Demopolis, with a, who's at four? Clay Central who, you know, played for the state championship and won it last year. And uh, they, they beat uh, Ben Russell 38-14. And then where does Etowah fit in? How, how high in the rankings do you move them up by uh, just really dismantling a, a less than spectacular Moody team? It's going to be interesting to see Etowah. They've, uh, I think they've really impressed so far this season. You know, they beat a good city last week, you know, from start to finish. And, uh, Moody might not be a very good team, but they did take care of business, not like they were supposed to. I want to say they were up maybe twenty-one to, I mean twenty-eight nothing after the first quarter. So right, they they took care of business and did it quick over there. So. Yep. Uh, just a general observation. I, I went to a couple of football games tonight. Uh, went to Boaz, saw them play against against Gunnersville, and then went and saw Sardis against um, against Sylvania, and then of course you and I saw. Hoax Bluff and, and Southside. The one common denominator as far as this area, if you can't run the football, you're not going to win a game. Mm, so and, and, and that seems to be, I, I think that's typical of any high school football team in this state. But really with, the, with some of those in our area, if you can't run the ball, you're not going to win. Mm-hmm. And there were some poor rushing efforts tonight, and and really last night. Um, Jeremy says, "Go Southside Panthers." They had the same record this time uh, last year, and they turned it around. So, yeah, not a bad point. That that's very true. Uh, you know, and, and the question that I raised to you last night was, is Hoax Bluff really that good, or is Southside maybe not so good this year? It's early. I mean, you guys think last year, I want to say Hoax Bluff won that game like 42 to 13. I could be wrong on that, but I know it was yeah. a big win by Hoax Bluff, and right. we saw what Southside did. They're trying to turn it around. So, I mean, who knows? There's a lot of new faces there. Hoax Bluff was, had, kind of had questions after school positions, wide mm-hmm. receiver and DBs, 
And I mean, Hoax Bluff is a little sloppy too. They had three fumbles and lost all three, yeah. and they still won twenty-one to nothing. Yeah. I mean, it was a sloppy game, and it was an impressive win all at the same time. So yeah. you had Darian Meads uh, battling a left foot injury, turf toe, and he <laughs> runs for one hundred ninety-seven runs yards for two hundred yards. So that's just. See? You, you run the football, you're going to win a football game. Yeah, Darren yeah. Meads uh, does that with the best of them. So. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just uh, he's a beast. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he, he really is. I went out to see Gazin City in Oxford or not, and uh, it was a tough night for the Titans. It looked like they were going to start out on, the, on a pretty good note. Uh, they stopped Oxford at fourth down at the, uh, at the Titan 45. They, Going to line up to punt, and uh-huh. next thing you know, fake punt for a 45-yard passing touchdown. And wow. it was downhill from there. Guys in the city was without DeMarcus making or not. He did dress out tonight, but you could tell he was limping uh, noticeably on his left foot, mm-hmm. or on his left leg, rather. Yeah. And so they were with Jay Lawson, just really couldn't get things going offensively. They did not have a first down. Guys in the city did not have a first down at all in the first half. Wow. They came out strong in the second half, though. Drove down the field, had a help on a 15-yard penalty from Oxford. Was able to score. I thought that was impressive because, I mean, that team had, I mean, that was just a very bad first half, and they came out strong, and they almost stopped Oxford on the next possession at the one-yard line, but they ended up punching in uh, on fourth and one. So, I mean, it's 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 just tough, tough for Garden City right now. They got a tough schedule. They got to get it back going. Hoping to have Dariki Wright back next week. Gaza yep. City is, and they really need them since they are heading to Spartan Open Region Play. So yep. that's a very big game for Gaza yep. City. Everybody gets started in the region play next week. So I mean, it, it, there's uh, there's really no rest for the weary. Uh, you know, like you said, Gaza City goes to Spartan to to open up the region, and uh, you know they need good things to happen right now. Um, Lauren says Glencoe. You know, she said they were uh, bad tonight, and they had a rough night losing. Was it forty-one nothing yeah. to Ramburn? But what about Arab hashtag Lee Osman effect? I mean, wow, <laughs> they've already won one more game than they did last year, right? Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know. Speaking of Glencoe, and of course, you know, as we know, uh, Lee Osman coached at Glencoe and and was quite successful there in leading them to playoffs a number of years, and then he's gone to to Arab. You know, Arab wins their first game, and we're like, "Oh, okay, wow." But then they were down. I think what was it, uh, twenty-eight to fourteen at one point. I know they were down to West I'm Point. Sure. Yeah. I, I, and then they rattle off thirty-five unanswered points, and they beat West Point. And so now they're going into region play with Brewer next week. So you know the way their schedule shapes up. I'll go ahead and say it. By the start of October, Arab, mind you, could be five and zero going into their bye week. Well, prior to last week, I probably would have laughed at you. But I mean, at this point, I mean, who who knows? Yeah. I mean, you know, give credit to the kids, obviously, you know. But man, what a heck of a job by Lee Osmond to get those kids to buy in. Just the and, process. I mean, going down, like you said, and having to come back shows mm-hmm. a lot. I mean, I just it's, yeah. it's unbelievable to see what's really happening is. with them. Uh, some of the state scores tonight, just just kind of touching on the top ten. Uh, Hoover ended up beating uh, Cocoa, Florida tonight, 37-23. McGill Tulin beat Murphy, 28-6. Central Phoenix City beat uh, Cedar Grove. Uh, well, actually, no, they didn't. They, they're playing Cedar Grove tomorrow night, my, my mistake. And then uh, Thompson beat Foley uh, 42-13. Hewitt Trustful beat West Forsyth, Georgia tonight, 47-19. Auburn lost to crosstown rival Opelika, 21-13. Mountain Brook beat uh, number nine uh, of 5A center point, 24-6. Uh, haven't heard from Theodore Baker or Lee Montgomery versus Lanier. And then Austin, who is in uh, Gazan City's region, knocked off Decatur tonight 56-14. to uh, that's, uh, that's impressive. And uh, I believe Austin is, ooh, they're only a few weeks away from playing. So, uh, And then everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. I know we're a little bit later than usual. We try to be on about 1030, but... Uh, you know, we had some some road games. You know, Teddy had to go to Oxford and things like that. So, 
and uh, we, we thank you for joining us. Uh, check out our game stories and our uh, photo galleries online. A good number of them should already be up and, and ready for viewing uh, tonight. At Just go to gasandtimes.com. Go to the sports section and you'll find them. And then also uh, check us out on Sunday. We're going to kind of do a, uh, a wrap-up of all of the, the high school football games uh, from, from our area and uh, put them in a special package that will be in the Sunday paper. So be sure to pick up a copy this Sunday. Daniel's coming in hot in the comment section. Moody and their fans was talking a lot of smack before the game, but that stopped real soon once kickoff came. So. Uh, yeah. I, Wow. <laughs> I'm I sure it did. I don't know what kind of smack talk there was, but uh, I mean, I, there wasn't much for Moody to say after that game. That kicked uh, no, off. uh, no, no. Uh, if anything, they they should have said, "Hey, uh, can we go ahead and crank that bus for you?" <laughs> you, know? you know, at all. I mean, I obviously wasn't at that game tonight, but uh, you know, it's really interesting to see how their offense is going to keep clicking. You know, I was really curious to see what they were going to look like under Holiday last week, yeah. and they were. Very impressive. Brady Troop just looked great in that game outside of yep. that one interception. And I haven't seen any numbers tonight, but I would imagine from yep. the looks of it, you know, he probably played pretty well. So. Well, and, and there again, too, is is you're having, you know, you've got Trent Davis and you got Nana Davis who who have stepped up to to shoulder the, the rushing load. And, and so there again, if you can run the football, mm -hmm. you've got to – pretty good shot of winning a football game. Mm -hmm. You've got to be balanced and you can't just, you know, you can't just rely on an arm, you know, uh, case in point, look at uh, what happened to Jacksonville state last night. You know, wow. their quarterback throws for over 400 yards and yet their best running back, what rushed for 32. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then they got thumped. So, you know, here again, if you can run the football and have a balanced offense, you've got a pretty good shot of winning a football game. But otherwise, you're just not. And there's a lot of teams right now that are in desperate need of trying to find that running back who's going to tote the mail for them. I did not say that happened with JSU last night. That one no, that caught me. Uh, I was at yeah, that was, Southside last night. That was a night. shocker. You know, when I saw that score, I was just like, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Was there a game in the county tonight that really did it that shocked you in terms of what happened? Score? You know, for for the talent that Sardis has, I really thought that they would come away with a win over Sylvania. And but then having seen them live tonight, I'm not surprised by that score. I really am not. Uh they had issues trying to run the ball and, and then you know, you've got to be able to run to set up the pass. But, you know, some teams will try to pass to set up the run. Either way, they just couldn't get, get the job done. Uh, that one was, was pretty surprising to me. Um, you know, I, I really, you know, I picked Gaston to win. I really thought that they could come off the schneid and, and uh, knock off San Rock. You know, maybe they're just a, a game away or two from uh, for picking it back up, you know. Um, Cusa score really. Shocking. Yeah, yeah. That that was a that was a big big shocker too. Is is uh, you know for the talent that Cusa has for a one A school, you know when you've got a, a Britain and you've got a Dell, you should be able to to be in a ball game. But uh, but there again. You got to have a defense, and, and right now I, th I think they're looking for one. Yeah, uh, Daniel said that Troop had 202 at the half, and Trent Davis had two rushing touchdowns as well as a receiving touchdown. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, there you go, a balanced offense. That's what you've got to have. You got to have a balanced offense to be successful, especially at the 5A level. You know, 5A and above, you've got to have that balance. Or you, you know, but then you know, look at look at uh, you know Southside. You look at uh, you look at uh, Hoax Bluff. You know, Hoax Bluff had a solid running game w with Meads that set up the pass. 
So but they didn't then, have to set up the pass. They threw it three times because they didn't have to throw the ball. They really they, didn't have you know? to. No, no. But they, they can. Didn't. That's the thing with Hoax Love. It's so impressive. Also, everybody talks about Darian Meads, and rightfully so, because yep. I mean the kid's likely going to be top three all mm-hmm. time in the state in rushing yardage for yep. a career. But uh, Ashton Golage is just as tough of a runner, if you ask me. The yep. quarterback, he's so tough at running the football. Yep. You have to respect that, and I think that obviously opens up things for Darian Meads. And, oh, yeah, Gulledge can throw it. You know, he didn't have to do it last yep. night, but he can when he needs to. So. Yeah. Well, and, and another thing that, you know, you want to talk about surprises, one thing that kind of really, that really stood out to me, especially from last night's ball game, was the play of Hoax Bluff's defensive line. Though that was uh, that was probably one of the better defensive lines I've seen because I mean they were constantly in the back in in, uh, in Southside's backfield and, and really bothered uh, you know they could not get a, a good flow as far as the running game was concerned because they were constantly in that backfield so you know wow. Westbrook continues their winning ways against Ragland and I, uh, like I'm gonna say it again. Should, not surprised. No. I'm really not. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of want. I want to say them against some you know tougher competition, but give credit to them. They're taking care of business in games that they're supposed to be taking care yep. of business in. They really. I are. think they are legit. Oh yeah. I cannot wait. Which is looking ahead, which is I guess what we do, but. Uh, Westbrook Ohachi, that game is going to be fun. That is going to be and a we're going great to, We're going to see up. just where Westbrook is real quick. That, was, that one's going to be a tough one for them in a few yep. weeks, but uh, that one's going to be fun. And then West End and I just defense. They, you know, they kind of did what they did last year. They struggled at times offensively last year. Yeah. Tonight they were able to score some points, but the de- defense again just really struggled tonight. Yeah. Well, I'm there it is. I mean, you got you got to – to be able to to you got to win the down yeah. and, and you know I saw that a lot tonight over at, at Boaz you know Boaz would get Gunnersville stopped and and Gunnersville would be faced with like say a third and long but then Gunnersville would just go right over the top and get a big first down. And, and you could just see that momentum just start to get chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. So, I mean, it's it's football. I, I mean, but uh, there's some, you know, there's a, a, there's a lot of coachable moments for a lot of these teams. Uh, some of them may have to, to really go back to the drawing board. Unfortunately, you gotta figure these things out quick because, like you said, region plays. That's you know, right. It's here now. Yeah, it's here now. So I mean, you know, we we've got to, we kick in the full gear, you know, next week, and and so uh, there's some some big matchups coming up. Yeah, even though Gaston lost night, it was a big night for the Bulldogs. They dedicated their field to assistant coach Bill Boyd. He was there from 1958 to 2005, and they did that during their pregame ceremony. So that was a Big nine of Gaston. So. That's, yeah, that's Captain really Bill cool. Boyd, I believe, is what uh, yeah. they call him. So. That's right. He's captain. He uh-huh. is the captain. Big nine for Gaston over there. Yeah. You know, just like you said, got to get back to the drawing board for some of these teams. But uh, I think for a lot of our teams in region play, there's not a lot of just super tough regions. I feel like there are a lot of teams that can – do well next, you know, and moving forward into the region play. But I think the big one next week is Southside and Sardis. We really don't know what to expect. Right. Tough loss for Sardis tonight. And obviously yeah. Southside's taken two losses already. Somebody's going to have to get in the win column. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that one's going to be interesting to see who kind of comes out on top on that one. Yeah. That that one, quite quite honestly, could, des- could decide whether um, somebody plays at home or goes on the road or even – Gets a playoff spot, it, you know, because you got to. Yeah. Now, I do want to mention too, Alexandria beat uh, Jacksonville tonight, twenty-one to fourteen. They want to say they scored about a minute left, and that's always a big rivalry. I think I heard that was like the eighty-second meeting between those two schools. But yeah, we know Jacksonville's good. Yeah, so you know, yeah. might need to watch out for Alexandria, which we knew or heading in, in my opinion, for that five A Region Six. I thought, you know, for those four playoff spots, you had it was a five-team race mm-hmm. between Etowah. Southside, Sardis, Alexandria, and Boaz. Now it looks like Boaz may not be in that fight after all. Yeah. You know, but who knows about Southside and Sardis, you know? 
True. You know, they True. haven't won yet. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. It's still early. Yeah, very early. But then, like I said, you know, next week is where it all comes down to to where it, it matters. You know, you can't go to the playoffs unless you win your, win your region games. And uh, and the first one's coming up next week. So Don says Arab was down thirty five to fourteen with twenty two minutes left. Arab scored thirty five unanswered and they won forty nine thirty five. Just Lee Osman wow. effect. I'll leave that mm-hmm. on that. I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lee Osman's good at what he does. Yeah, he sure is. You know, and uh, there's a number of schools that wish they had him. There's no doubt about that. And I guarantee you, there I know one school is daggum glad they got him. You got that right. So. Well, we appreciate you guys joining us tonight. We'll wrap it up. Uh, this is a tough night for the county. Very. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's a long football season. Yeah, it is. You know, just to, to recap, San Rock over Gaston tonight, 19-6. to Rambert over Glencoe, 41 to nothing. Oxford over Gaston City, 42-7. Uh, Cedar Bluff over Spring Garden, 14-12. to Piedmont over Addison, 28-16. Fife over Geraldine, 28 nothing. Sylvania over Sardis, 21-12. Albertville over Columbia, 61-0. Gunnersville over Boaz, 28-19. Westbrook over Ragland, 47-18. Appalachian over Coosa Christian, 49-19. And then last night we had Hoax Bluff over Southside, 21-0. Uh, we go into the to basically uh, week one of region play. Next week, big games, every one of them are big. I don't care what you say. Every one, if if you're in a region game, they're big. Mm -hmm. And so now we start to to jockey for playoff positioning. Some are going to get in, some are not. You know, right now there's some that that I'm kind of scratching my head just wondering, you know, maybe warming up the basketball gym a little bit early. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And and then there's always going to be those surprises. There's going to be a team like a Southside who makes a run late, mm-hmm. you know, and those are the most dangerous teams are those that make that run late. So let's see what happens. And Greg says congrats to Gunnersville. They had a big win over Boaz if he missed that. Um, it's, like you said, I mean, I, I think with Southside and Sardis, they're both still very much alive. That region's not very strong. So no. Somebody's got to, four teams not. have to make the playoff. That's right. So. Four have to go. So, I mean, it, it's, it's you know, we'll find out. Yep. It's going to be fun. Folks, we appreciate your time. Again, go to thegazetimes.com. Check out our game stories, our photo galleries. A sh- uh, good number of them should already be up and, and online right now. So go there. Check us out. We'll come back to you next Friday, about 1030, hopefully right around that time, maybe a little bit later, depending upon where we're at. Uh, But we'll definitely be with you, and we hope you'll join us next week. Our time is up. We thank you for yours.